Well, hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Pastor Mike here. We are having our online worship for this third Sunday in Lent, March 7th. Welcome to everyone joining us. A uh, reminder, again, as this Lenten season goes on, I encourage you to uh, take the time to engage scripture and prayer, sacrificial giving, all of those wonderful marks of this Lenten season. Uh, as well as we do Sunday mornings, our focus is the covenants of God. So this week we'll be looking at the Ten Commandments from our first lesson, so pay special close attention to that. Well, those are the announcements for this morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us take a brief moment to gather our hearts and minds for worship. Now, as the people of God, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given a Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sin. Now, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening song is 10,000 Reasons. Thank you. 
join me for our opening dialogue. Let us worship God who has done great things. We rejoice in our God who made a way through the desert of this world. Let us worship God who has caused streams of mercy to flow in the wasteland. We are the people God has formed through Christ. We worship him and we rejoice. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. We praise God for the grace that has saved us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forever. Hello again, my little Lutherans. Pastor Mike is here. And we're, for our kids' time today, going to talk about what we've been talking about, God's covenants. We had that one a while back with Noah, you know, where God promises things. And we hear God's promises. We know that God always comes through in his promises, right? Abraham, he had to wait a long time to be a dad, but God came through. Now, here is one of the things that's wild, too. The next covenant, a.k.a. promise, that we have from God is around the Ten Commandments. Hopefully you guys have studied them in Sunday school or you've heard of them. Sometimes the Ten Commandments, well, we, we go back and forth on We don't like them. We maybe struggle. Because they're rules, right? And it's like, well, pastor, how is a rule a promise? That's the wild thing about this. So God was taking care of God's people, and he brought them to a safe place. And afterwards, he wanted them to keep being safe and to be healthy and to do what's right. And he wanted to be their God. He promised he'd always be their God, but he wanted them to be, be everything he wanted them to be, everything that he made them to be. So he gave them these rules to help them and to keep them safe. See, I'm a parent, and there's parents out there. And a lot of times parents will make promises to their kids about I'll always love you, and I'll always try to keep you safe. Now, you might say, well yeah, they'll come and they'll pick me up if I hurt myself, they'll put a band-aid on, they'll do all those things. But sometimes their rules are also about trying to keep their little loved ones safe, like you guys. And be like, really? Yeah. When my boys were much smaller, we had the parking lot rule, where you had to hold my hand. And that's really because tiny humans might not be able to be seen by some of those people that like to go fast in parking lots. So I could always hold on to them and make sure that, well, they were safe. That's what God does in the Ten Commandments. When he tells us we shouldn't lie or steal or hurt others, he's trying to keep us safe, both outside and in. So God promises that he's always with us and always looking out for us. All right, blessings, my little Lutherans. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Our first reading this morning comes from the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods, before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water beneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. 
Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 19. Please join me in its reading. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Much more go find gold, sweeter far than honey than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Our second reading comes from the first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter. Now the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in this wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together our gospel acclamation. We proclaim Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. 
the Jews then said, This temple's been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, we continue our Lenten journey this morning with this text from the book of Exodus. This is our third covenant. This is our third look at one of the promises of God, if you will. And this one involves that story. Because in many ways, what we have is just the Ten Commandments, right? Just laws. But if we don't know what's going on, we miss what this covenant is and what it's about. So we must remember that Joseph, Joseph, long ago, one of the grandchildren there of great grand, 12 tribes of Israel, Joseph was in Egypt because his brothers had thrown him into the pit and he had been raised up as kind of second in command. And after the whole you know, famine and saving everybody and his whole family coming to live with him, many things happened. Generations came and went until the name of Joseph was forgotten. And eventually the Israelites became slaves in the land of Egypt. And over time, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. It was horrible. And so they cried out to the God of Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob, a God that had covenanted with them again and again. And God heard. And so he raised up Moses, who, well, he's always an interesting fellow to talk about, but Moses, who we hear the stories of him with the burning bush, and then the plagues, and eventually leading the people out, because Pharaoh's heart over and over again had been turned to stone. But eventually he relented, for the plagues were too much. And then, with a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, God led his people forth, led them through the Red Sea, and eventually to this mountain. God was faithful to God's promises. God took care of his people in their hour of need and led them to safety and freedom by his mighty arm. And now, and now they are free, and they need to come to their own land, their own place, for they are a numerous people. Again, fulfilling the promise of Abraham, that covenant. Now there are numerous people. And what does it mean? They are now a nation. And this covenant, is all about this important piece of, I like to call, relationship. Relationship is covenant. And God is setting up what their relationship will be as God and as God's people. That's what's going on here. Now, there are numerous laws, but even beyond, the Ten Commandments are so important because it really, really lays out what is important to God, God's value for God's people, and all of these things. It's amazing, right? For this God has taken people, guided them, saved them, fulfilled his promises, and are now bringing them forth. And he says, I will be your God and you will be my people. We, we will live in harmony. I will go about with you. Again, in pillar of fire and cloud. Again, the Ark of the Covenant. I will be your God. But like in all relationships, how is it going to work? It doesn't matter if it's marriage. It doesn't matter if it's business. It doesn't matter any of these things. And here's where we need to pause. Because you could be shaking your head saying, Pastor, as long as God loves the people and the people love God, won't everything work out? 
In a perfectly non-broken world, yes. But that ain't it, brothers and sisters. That's not the world we live in, and God knows that. So God still, to this day, covenants with us like this. That he sets up a relationship, and he sets up hopes, dreams, desires, values, boundaries. What faithfulness looks like. And it's for these reasons God does. One. And I'm going to do a three-point sermon here because every now and then we got to do this. One. Clarity. Clarity is a wonderful thing. Here is a people who, is, who are forming something new. A new nation in many ways. Maybe a new church is forming. Maybe a new family is forming. And guess what? Guess what? Not everybody might be on the same page. And there's going to be differences. There's going to be diversity. But if there is clarity about what the central things are, what the goals are, what the hope is, what the vision is, we have that. And it makes things so much easier. Right? I love seeing commercials or ads where they don't even tell you what they're talking about. I zone out. There's no clarity of what's going on here. But God makes it clear in the Ten Commandments what God values, what God wants the people to care about, what God wants the people to focus on. And as I tell, as I tell the confirmation kids, this is important to God. These things matter to God. When you think about it, that is how we should. God wants people to be able to be safe. They shouldn't have to worry about being murdered. He loves us. He wants healthy relationships. That's why there's the no adultery. Have healthy relationships. These are important. The coveting. Don't be overcome by greed. This is dangerous. Over and over. That clarity is key. If you've worked at a business and the clarity of job description is not there, it's hard. It's frustrating, right? Over and over, when we have clarity, we can function so much better, be so much healthier. And God wants clarity, even to the point of saying, I'm making this abundantly clear. I'm God. Nothing else is. That is part of the covenant. That is part of relationships. Clarity. Two. Safety. Again, in, in this covenant, in this relationship, God is their God and is concerned about their well-being. And besides values, we can also glean from this the risks that God sees for those that he loves. And he wants to be their God, and he wants to make it clear how, how people can be kept safe. That's often the point of rules in relationships, right? I use the parent example in the children's sermon. Most parents out there can know that. Schools have these rules. We have them. Again, I use safe. Not that there is a universal, universal place where there can nothing that can go wrong. But there are numerous ways we can reduce those risks. Again, I talked about the parking lot rule. That does not mean that my children are 100% safe in the parking lot at that age. But we do that. We do that simple thing so that we can add that level of safety. Over and over we can see that. There's nothing wrong with that. Because God knows how fragile our existences are. That's why we have Lent. That's why I have all these things. He knows even the dangers of the internal risks to our soul. The coveting is a risk. It's a danger. That leads to these thefts and violence and all these things. The Sabbath. 
is to keep us safe. Because we can easily fall into overwork, fall into the path of I can't stop. And the cult of busyness takes over. But God says, stop. I'm God. I'm in control. You will be okay. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And that is maybe the third. That these laws then show inherently that at the heart of the relationship, God loves us. You might be shaking your head. How? Well, over and over again, if we have a God that goes to the extents to keep us safe, to try to keep us healthy, to be clear, to be forthright with us, to go and to gather the people, to even before the nation starts off says, look, let's start this right so you are clear, you are safe, you are healthy, you are good so we can do this. And who over and over, even as when we fail our pieces of the covenant, keeps reaching out, rebinding us, how he even says, I will write my law on their hearts. And then says Christ, that his covenants, his laws, his calls to faithfulness for our health and for the world are deep and abiding signs of his love. If I didn't love my kids, would I protect them? No. If I didn't love my kids, would I be clear about what's important in life, what's important to me? If I didn't love the congregations, would I not be clear about, hey, we should be doing these things? No, we know that. We know that in clarity and in safety and in setting those boundaries, it's an act of love. God loves us. And he even goes to the point of the cross this season where he knows we cannot perfectly fulfill the law or the covenant. So he does. He does. And that is the joy of this covenant. He is our God through good, through bad, through up, through down, and through life, and through death. And so these are a gift to us to see what our God values and that he values above all, us. Amen. Our song of the day is Rock of Ages, Clap for Me. sisters in Christ, uh, again, grounding ourselves in God's covenants, let us together confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us gather together in prayer. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in it. We pray for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, our NAS bishop, Jeffrey Clements, our missionary, Kristen Angstrom, our companion churches both in Tanzania and in India. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church. May your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when a way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislatures, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering especially those who are affected by COVID-19, those who seek peace and harmony in our world, those whose needs we regularly hold in our hearts, may they honor prayer chain, Lord, we raise to you, O now. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified, Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders, so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you for Perpetua, Felicity, and all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Finally, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace, Lord, be with you always, and also with you. Uh, so, brothers and sisters in Christ, as always, we offer and we give thanks for all of the support that you give in time, talent, and treasures. But especially uh, this, this Sunday, as we are in the season of Lent, uh, contemplating uh, the sacrificial giving component. Hopefully you've been able to be mindful of not just giving up, but giving to, to support those in need. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Now for the offering. Our offering song is Give Thanks. <laughs> Join me in our offering prayer. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. 
Accompany us in this meal, so we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our song of thanksgiving is Cornerstone. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is God's word that defends us and guides us even as he gives the law on high. It is his word that forms the covenant relationship. So we give thanks for that word. Gracious Father, who has named us and claimed us, calling us your beloved children, you know the secrets of our hearts. When we sin and stray from your paths, you astound us with your saving grace. For this word of life, we give you thanks. Loving Jesus, living word, and your kingdom of God has come near. Through you, all that was lost has been found. Help us to boldly follow wherever you may lead, trusting your promise that we need not fear, for you are with us. For this word of life, we give you thanks. Holy Spirit, the mystery in which we dwell, into our scarcity your abundance flows. Enliven all communities with your good news. Guide us to love and serve Jesus giving ourselves away for the sake of the world. For this word of life, we give you thanks. All glory to you, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art Amen. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Jesus is a Rock in a Weary Land. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.